Okay, <laughs> welcome to On Set. I am Daniel Norton, and you saw that beautiful transition. Seth is not here today, so I'm working all the computers, so be good kids in the chat. I'm here with Darren. We're going to work with constant lights or, or continuous lights for this demo, making various portraits. I've got a few different types. We're gonna talk a little bit about what each one is. Let me know if the sound and everything's okay, because I don't have anybody monitoring. Um, so you guys are monitoring. <laughs> um, so Darren, I'm gonna put her, First of all, I'm putting a link in the chat. If, for those who don't know, I just recently started a podcast for Adorama. If you haven't gone to the podcast, please do. Um, follow, it's gonna be really fun. We're not gonna talk about this kind of stuff, this stuff you come here for. That's gonna be philosophy, kind of fun talks about, you know, why we create not so much tech. But second link I'm gonna put here is to Darren's Insta, so you guys can follow her. Boom. Boom. Okay, sounds good. Nova Scotia, nice, I have a, a family up there. Beautiful country up there. Okay, so let's get this going. This is gonna be a bit of a test because we're gonna use constant lights and if you guys have watched any of these where I've used constant lights before, the exposure's all over the place, but I think I've got this overhead camera rigged correctly. We'll play, I try all the crazy stuff when Seth's not here because Seth does not let me do that. When Seth is here, he's like, no, we must do it correctly. But here I am. <laughs> all right, so let's talk constant lights. I'm going to show you several different types. The most obvious type that people use probably the most right now are LEDs. And if you were to go back in time where I had more hair here and yeah, more hair and less hair, I don't know. But anyways, I once said you would never use LEDs. <laughs> Things you've said, right, that people did. <laughs> LEDs are great. We're probably going to primarily use those. There's lots of great LEDs now. But there are other types of light sources and there's reasons to look into them. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is tungsten light, which is generally... Uh, for me, one of the more favorable types of lights. The reason why tungsten is, is good, number one, is because it is cheap, relatively speaking. The amount of light you get, how much power you get from it, and the cleanness of the light, how nice the, the color is of the light, is substantially better with tungsten. So at, you know, dollar for dollar. So you can buy a tungsten light for, let's say, $200. If you bought an LED light for $200, that tungsten light would be way better. In fact, you could buy, I don't have one here today, but you could buy what's called a photo flood, which is like five or six dollars, and it has amazingly clean light. What's the problem with tungsten lights? Everybody in the chat's yelling right now. They get, I can tell them they get hot, right? They're hot, and that one person in the chat's like, and they're very yellow. They don't know how to set their white balance. So <laughs> if, if your tungsten light is, is not looking correct the color-wise, it's because your white balance is not set correctly. In fact, tungsten light has very, very clean color. If you want to get punchy color, accurate color, tungsten is a great option. Downsides, it gets hot, right? So if you're, if you're photographing uh, something that is going to be, uh, that's going to be problematic, like let's say, I don't know, ice cream, right? It's melt. People, maybe some people, right? Crowns. But at the same time, it can be very useful. So I'm going to talk about a, a light fixture that I really like from Shamira called the Triolet. Um, it is right here. It's not on camera, so I have to bring it up. Da, 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 da. Okay. It might also be the Triolet. I'm not really sure. It depends on how you pronounce things. But this thing here is, uh, I have a little attachment on it. This fixture here is the, is the triolet. I have a bulb in it right now. The reason why it's called a triolet is because it can use three types of bulbs. It can use uh, what they call mogul base, which is what I have in here right now. This is a thousand watt bulb. Thousand watts, bright, powerful, you're about to see. You can also switch it out to use two pin, so like more conventional tungsten bulbs, and there's a glass dome that goes on top, and you can use regular photo floods or just any kind of bulb that you can screw into a, a, what they call E26 base. So this is super versatile. It's not crazy expensive. It comes with, if I do not, I bought mine so long ago, but I'm pretty sure it comes with the a speed ring so you can put it into soft boxes. Make sure that your soft box that you put it into is set, is rated for heat because otherwise it will melt. Okay. The tree light is great. What I have here though, which is super interesting and Shamira, when this is, this is actually a prototype, I think. I almost dropped it. It's not anymore. You can buy these on Adorama. It's listed in the description. This is actually an adapter to put on the triolet that allows you to put pro photo accessories. So I could, let's say, put my favorite pro photo accessory, which you guys all know what that is, the magnum reflector, on the triolet. So before I do that, though, it all feels so delicate. So I'm going to slide this on. All right, so this, this basically just gives me the base. This is very bright. I have 
six, six, six of the brightest available, conventionally available LED lights lighting this room right now. How many do I have? Six, right? I'm gonna turn this light on for y'all. <laughs> Nothing happened, right? Or did it? This light is brighter than the six conventionally available LED bulbs. And, oh, whoa, look at me. I am completely blown out. <laughs> there we go. Even here, roasted. I mean, yes, it's a thousand watts. We could put a, a lesser bulb in there. Look up here. Yes, it's a thousand watts. We could put a lesser bulb in there, but pound for pound, I think this, this bulb is like $10. Pound for pound, this is bright. This is powerful. Oh, I'm getting kind of warm. Are you getting warm? It, it does get warm, though. Yeah, you don't want to be... I wouldn't want to touch that right now, so let me just say that right now. So let's kill, the, let's kill this for a second so we're not, we're not melting ourselves. So why don't we just buy... Why don't we always just use tungsten lights, right? Like, why would I use anything else? Fragile, Right? Uh, inexpensive but fragile, so they don't last very long. Color does not match daylight, which means that if I'm using it outside, I've got to put filters on or gels on it. And the other thing is that it gets hot, which is the big thing. Let me check the chat. West Virginia. Ooh, all right. Beginner photographer, you want to become a professional. Do I start with a white t-shirt as a beginner? <laughs> yes. Okay. Missouri. Nigeria, nice, that might be the furthest away. Oh, John, you made it live, nice, welcome. Okay, let's see, West Point, Connecticut, Westport, Connecticut, West Point's in New York, uh, Pennsylvania, cool, cool, cool. All right, guys, um, that's tungsten. We're really not gonna use this that much because I think people kinda know what tungsten light is. If you're just getting started in photography, it can be one of the easiest ways to break in. I used to recommend like low total lights for people all the time or somebody that wants to just, maybe you're not um, looking to pursue photography full time or studio photography, but you wanna do some stuff. Things like photo floods and these things can be very useful. Now, I just wanted to show you this because I think it's really cool. Let's say you've got this and you buy this adapter. I can put this magnet reflector on here, which is, <laughs> this is kind of scary. Because we all know that the magnet reflector is not only my favorite attachment, but it amplifies the, the amount of uh, power or light because it's all mirrored inside. So we saw what we just had with power, right? If, if the entire internet goes down when I turn this on, I apologize. All right, we're gonna bounce it off this wall. All right, whoosh. Bouncing off the wall, lighting us up, giving us a ton, ton of power. Right? <laughs> That's so funny. All right, switch to this camera. And what's cool about this, by the way, is that because I'm bouncing this off a white wall because I happen to be in a studio, I can actually do this. Go like this. And let me bust the camera out. If you don't take a picture within the first few minutes of the video, people get upset. So, all right. So I'm just gonna come in here and, okay, so she's looking very warm, obviously, because it's tungsten light. This is not gonna be enough power to light it like this, but I can start to feather it off. I'm gonna blast you guys with this. Let's bring it this way. Ooh. This is me wrecking the place already. I'm already wrecking the place. Boom, here we go. All right, that looks pretty good. That's not blinding you too much, is it? All right, so I'm gonna go to 640 ISO. And again, the issue with uh, any constant light is that they're not going to be super powerful, right? Oh, that's not too bad. All right, so boom. we can see here that we've got nice even light and it's beautiful color, right? Now, because it is a little bit warm, because it's tungsten, so what I'm gonna do is go over here to my, to my color balance, and I'm just gonna switch it to where it says white balance. I'm just gonna go here and go 
incandescent, which is the cool way of saying tungsten. And now we have a good skin tone, beautiful flat light. If I wanted to, do you, do you mind being blinded? She's gonna be blinded for a second. I, you always ask first and you just do it. So this is gonna get really bright. We're already off the rails. We can, can you feel it? We're off the rails, here, here we go. That's not too bad, is it? It's toasty, right? We're keeping it nice and warm. All right. So I'm gonna create kind of a nice, that's really bright, right? Okay. I'm feathering it off a bit. We're gonna create kind of a punchy, oh wow, okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna crank my shutter speed, because remember, with a constant light, we can use the shutter speed to adjust. I'm just gonna keep myself at that four. You can close your eyes if you want for now. Okay, I wanna get set up. Okay, ready, one, two, three, open, boom. Okay, you can close again. All right, we can create, again, something that's got a little bit more, it almost feels like the sun, right? And the thing is, you can put a, a magnum reflector on a flash and get this kind of sunlight feel I'm gonna do my little thing here so I can go like this. I think I did that right. Nope, okay, hold on guys. I'm trying to get a picture in picture here, but of course it works when you do the test. And then when you go live, it never works, okay. There we go, okay. All right, so we can, obviously, we can take her outside, we can use a flash to get the same feel. However, the difference here is when you look at the image on the screen, you can see that her eyes, all the bright color in it, because that bright light is going to compress the, the, the pupils down so you get all the color. It's the opposite of dilate. The, every time I ask what the opposite of dilate is, and I, I never know, but it's basically opposite. Uh, Cool, cool, cool. Why use constant light instead of flash? Okay, that is a good question. Okay, right, there you go. Uh, use it because you get what you're gonna, you see what you're gonna get. Less disruptive to the model subject. Yeah, there's lots of reasons why. Let's talk about that, that's a good question. And we'll let this cool off a little bit. <laughs> you only get melted once, so. All right, so. Why would we use a constant light If I can do this right, yeah. Why would we use a constant light over a flash? There's a few reasons. If you're just starting, especially, and forgetting about that though, I mean, but I'm gonna start here because this is what most people will think of immediately is, you're used to using, uh, you know, the natural light or the light in a room or whatever. You're used to being able to see what you get. What you see is what you get, right? Especially with like mirrorless cameras, right? We're seeing exactly what we're gonna get. The constant light will provide you with that. It's, it's, it's simpler in a lot of ways, right? The learning curve is not as steep with constant light. That being said, there's a lot of downsides, and I've talked about a lot why flash is uh, the go-to for stills photographers. But there's also the idea of a lot of people doing uh, multimedia now, so we're doing uh, video clips as well as photography. And there are certain um, types of lighting that just work better with constant. Like for instance, the next thing we're gonna talk about is an HMI and using something with like a more focusable lens. Yes, you can put lenses on top of flashes. They're usually not really the same unless you get very specialized flashes that are very expensive. So let's move this for a second and let's go to an HMI. HMI is effectively daylight balance tungsten if you wanna think of it like that. You're gonna be daylight balance. This is not exactly accurate, but that's the best way I could say it to make sense. It's a hot light, but it's daylight balance. Major differences are way more expensive. <laughs> so, you know, so you're gonna pay a lot for an HMI. It, it's not in everybody's budget, but I wanted to cover it because it is an important uh, tool. You see them a lot in filmmaking, especially when they need to, let's say, challenge the sun with a constant light source because your HMI is actually in a very similar way to a tungsten light. It's it's more powerful. You know, you often see it. You used to see this a lot when people were using fluorescent. You notice I'm not using fluorescent here. When people were using fluorescent a lot, they would talk about how, well, fluorescent light is three times the brightness or five times the brightness or whatever. But the reality is, is that as much as that was true, like really close up, the way that fluorescent light works 
and LED as well, for the most part, most types of LEDs, is different than the way a tungsten light works. So what ends up happening is when you take the light and you put it real close, sure, it's the same, right? You have the same equivalent power. But as you, am I blasting myself with this thing here? You can see it's weird. HMIs take a little bit to warm up. Uh, but when the light gets further away, when you want to use it with uh, different uh, tools, you want to use a focused style light, these lights just don't, don't cut it. They're not the same for the most part. But we're going to talk about data lights in a second. This is a data light, by the way. So HMI is kind of for those situations where you want daylight, you have a budget, you're going to be, you know, this is more filmmakers usually, um, although I do see some photographers use them. And you want to mix it with daylight. Like I'm in a daylight studio. You can't tell now because it's night basically, but when I'm in here during the summer and the windows are open, I can use this light. It will mix perfectly with no gels. That's the advantage of the HMI. I've used this before in a video. I used my big one where I made, it was a, a cloudy day. I took, I was with Marissa. We made this like skylight look on the wall and you cannot tell that's not daylight. This is the closest thing you're going to get to daylight, but this light is like $2,000. So it's not, you know, compared to the trio light, which is like $400. This is like $2,000. So it's much, much, much more expensive. So keep that in mind. The bulbs are more expensive. It's just a different level of, of uh, light. Good for pets. Is it live now? Yeah, I'm live. Hold on. Are we not getting a live signal? It says quality good here. Let me know if we're still live, guys. <laughs> I love this question by Brian because I love the last part of it. The last, every photographer question ends with, and can I do it for free? <laughs> okay, so I'll talk about that in a second, but let's take a look at the HMI. Again, powerful. This is a focusable light. So now, don't look right at it. Definitely don't look at an HMI. Now, I will say this too, by the way. Be weary of who you buy your HMIs from. Make, I mean, generally, most of them are good. Some of them have a lot of UV in them. So you got to be very careful. The data lights have something like 400 times less UV than most blah, 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 if you read the things, because they have special coatings, which just makes them more expensive. If you're buying just Joe Blow HMIs, you don't know who you're getting them from, don't leave them on a model too long. They can actually get sunburn because they have UV in them. They've actually got all the light, which makes them HMIs great for, reprodu reduce for reproducing certain, we'll cut that part out, for, <laughs> for reproducing certain kinds of looks, right? Like, again, true sunlight. So don't worry, you're not going to get a suntan. Or worry, if you wanted a suntan, you're not going to get one. So again, I'm using a hard light. I'm just kind of uh, using the, the focusable light. We can focus this light real tight and control it on her face, right? So now if I come in, she's probably super bright behind me. Up, oh, she's a, she's still super bright behind me because <laughs> that's a very bright light. Um, let me kill these. And again, we can see now how I'm focusing it. It's way too bright, I'm blinding you. HMIs are not, you can dim them a little bit, but they're not really, they don't have that kind of flow, which we're gonna talk about LEDs in a second which are much better when you want that kind of control. There we go, I dimmed it down. Huh, you're still a bit bright there, but we'll just do it quick. All right, so I'm gonna get this set up. Now, if you remember, and I'm gonna talk about the, I'm gonna answer your question in a second about sending the pictures right to the computer. So this HMI is, I'm gonna take a shot at the same exposure, which is a little bit darker, sorry, good, right? Look at how blue it is, right? We'll talk about that in a second. Let me, let me get a proper exposure. Okay, ready? Good, all right. Okay, so she's very blue now, right? Why is she so blue? You can't see anything because I haven't done the thing. Let me do this because you don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, she's very blue. She's very blue because up here, if you remember, I switched the white balance to tungsten and I'm using a piece of software called Capture One. Capture One allows you to bring the images directly from your camera to the computer so you can actually work on them. We're looking at the raw files. Now, this image, of course, is daylight balance, right? It's an HMI. So what I actually want to do is come here and switch my white balance to that. I'm going to go, uh, I'll go shot. There we go. Okay, so now we've got proper skin tone with the HMI the way I like it anyways. Um, you can actually see Let's actually do this correct, because HMI is not actually 5,000, which is why I have this set. It's, it's probably closer to 55. 
So it actually come up to 56. There we go. Okay, we can actually see, right, in our skin, a bit of a difference, right? The tungsten's a little bit kind of pinkier. The HMI has UV, right? I mean, you're not here with me, but am I still blinding you? I'm blinding the heck out of her. Uh, <laughs> I'll turn it away from you. I told you I wasn't gonna leave it on very long, then I did, because I'm terrible like that. All right, so the HMI is, has got UV in it. It's actually going to get a truer, truer color, even than tungsten. We can see the difference here, and it does make a difference. Can you do a custom white balance? Yes, but it's not about that. Because when you, when you shoot something that is, I'm looking at nothing right now. Boop, let's do this. I'm gonna do it. Let me set up a couple things here, guys. Boop, let me do this. Let's go like that. Let's picture and picture myself here. Boop. Okay. Okay, I guess I can't do that. I think you have to set it up before you start. Okay. So this is cool, picture and picture. There we go, okay. All right, so <laughs> this way I'm you know, looking at the weird thing. Basically, your HMI is gonna have the cleanest of all the light, but Again, you definitely at a higher price point. Uh, it's more specialized. These are tough lights though, right? They're really designed for production. They're really designed for working. Tungsten is real great. I use that Magnum reflector, right? From, I don't know, half the distance, so closer to her, right? With a thousand watts, right? This H, and I, and I, I got this one, I backed it up. I went down two stops, so using the Ember Square, they're roughly the same brightness. So this little baby light is as bright as the thousand watt light when it's focused. So you're looking at smaller light fixture, more power, HMIs. Dash me a little camera, Vancouver. Okay, so again, this is, um, this is Capture One. So I just wanna point that out because somebody did ask. So Capture One again is going to be good for when you are working like I am here with a model, we wanna see the pictures right away, we've got Capture One, we can do that, right? So let's get to now, now I wanna talk about, we're gonna jump past the, the lights you guys probably aren't gonna use very often, and let's get to something more common, which is going to be LED. So LED, light emitting diodes, that one I know what it means, right? LED lights are LED lights are everywhere now. And like I said at the beginning of this, I was like, oh, you know what, LED lights, people talk about them all the time. And five years ago, or whatever, I would have been like, oh, you would never use LED lights for real professional stuff. You still need to be careful because with LEDs more so than any other light kind that I'm gonna talk about today, you get what you pay for. Can you go on some web store and buy an LED light for $30? Yes. Am I going to show you $500, $600, dollars LEDs? Yes. What's the difference? The difference is that LEDs, none of them, even the most expensive ones, have all the color. They're all missing colors. They have uh, jumps and, and falls in the color spectrum. So you can't, you can't get perfect color with an LED. But the more you spend for it, the closer you get to it. So if you're, when you start getting closer to the higher end LEDs from some of the better brands, you're actually getting good enough color that you can actually use it commercially, no problem. The smaller ones, uh, and when I say smaller, I mean like smaller companies that are less expensive, they usually are not going to have good color and they might look fine at first, but usually they change color while you're using them. There's a lot of weirdness that goes on with LEDs. So be wary of LEDs as you're buying them. The ones I'm gonna recommend today are all pretty good to fantastic, right? I'm gonna start with a panel light from Savage. I need batteries for this one. One of the advantages of LEDs, or probably the biggest advantage of them, is that they draw very little power. That means you can run them almost always from batteries. And that makes them super convenient. Also, one of the most common form factors for LED lights are panels. So this is this, the Savage Edge Lit. Again, all the stuff is in the description. This is the Edge Lit Pro or something I think it's called, but it's in the description. This can run off AC. This can run off batteries, which I'm about to do. The kit comes with batteries that I got anyways. This is actually the exact same light, not this one, but this is the exact same type of light that I use at my computer when I do my live streaming. If you've ever seen me live stream on Twitch or whatever, 
you know, and I've got a light on me, this is the light I use. I have it set at like 8% when I do that. <laughs> um, I can run this off, off battery. Um, it lights up, it's a nice flat panel. You don't get the problem, what they call picket, fence it, picket fencing, uh, that you get with a lot of LEDs. When you buy LED lights, a lot of times they are a bunch of bulbs facing forward, right? And because of that, each bulb is an independent small source. So if you get close to walls and stuff, you'll get this weird shadow pattern that looks like multiple shadows, because it is, and that's called picket fencing. What a lot of companies will do is they'll give you some kind of diffuser to go over the front of it to reduce that. However, that kills a lot of your power of your light. So these lights are designed from the beginning to not have that problem because they've got this very thick diffusion. So, you, you know, this gives you a nice kind of smooth light without the picket fencing. Because this light is flat and diffused, we can use it for like a more gentle light, right? If we want to use it for like a soft light, somebody like me that needs nice light, you know, <laughs> we can create a nice, uh, nice kind of smooth light. Now it's not huge, right? This is roughly the size of somebody's head. So if you want to use this for a portrait, you've got to put it pretty close. So that's what we're going to do. Luckily, this does not get hot. All right. So I'm going to come in from this side because I'm already standing over here. Whenever you're deciding where to put the light, always think about where you are and then just put it there because nobody wants to move around. As usual, we want to put the light above the eye level. We're going to put it relatively close, coming down, creating a nice shadow across your face. I'm going to turn off the overheads again, and hopefully I can make this work properly again. Okay. Yep, there we go. Uh, good. Okay. We should have a decent exposure. Yep, we do. You can probably tell this is the light I used when I set up the exposure today because <laughs> it's like perfect. <laughs> okay, so we've got a nice, nice soft light. Give us our exposure. This would be great for a key light on somebody. If you're going to make a, a, you know, again, like I use mine when I'm doing streaming, nice, soft, smooth light. So let's come in with the camera. Let's make a base exposure. Once I go through all these different lights, guys, we're going to make an actual finished image. I'm just kind of going through them now. And what we're going to do here is, oh yeah, this is nice. I'm going to say right off the bat that I like this one. Obviously, this is what I use for myself. Uh, I'm going down to, uh, let's see, we're at about 400 ISO at 80th of a second, F4. Nice. Okay, so I'm going to go like this. And we can see that we have a nice, beautiful shot of her there. I can do this again. I'm going to do that that way. I'm looking for the right camera. Okay, we can see, right? Smooth, nice and soft. We get that beautiful color in the eyes. Again, this light is not huge, so if I back it up too far, we're going to have uh, issues with it being too hard. But this close, we have nice, beautiful light across her face. If you're not shooting tethered all the time, is Lightroom good enough? Yeah, of course. Uh, I'm going to use the RGBW. Yep, yep. All right. Okay, so this is really pretty, nice and simple. The only issue with panel lights to me, as a photographer that photographs things and not just myself, right, for a thing, is that this is a one-trick pony, right? When I buy a piece of gear, I want to do as much stuff as possible. Things that are super specific mean that I have to carry a lot of them. This is why I use this setup to do my live streaming because I leave it set up all the time. It does the thing I need it to do, right? It's great if you do nice, clean portraits, you're, you're lighting yourself, that kind of stuff. But if you want versatility and you have the budget, something that can take attachments is probably a better option for you. So I'm going to show you my, you've seen this one before, I'm sure, because I've used it a bunch of times. This is probably my favorite LED light, which is from Dato Light. This is the DLED 7, I think. Yeah, 7. Okay, this, this is basically a lot like the HMI we looked at. We can focus it, but it has a few, ex few uh, things that make it better in a sense. One is that it doesn't get hot, which of course is nice. Two is that it can change color. This is a bicolor light. It could be the same color as tungsten or daylight. By the way, so does this one. I should mention that. And uh, the third thing is it just has a low draw power consumption wise. 
So we're going to plug this thing in. I'm going to unplug my beautiful HMI, which I do love, but the LED is probably, again, more feasible for most people. We're going to turn this on and take a look at it. I'm not blasting the camera out, right? Okay, again, it's focusable. We can control our power and our color temperature. Right now, we're basically shooting in daylight, so I'm going to go to uh, 55, which is, I'll go to 5,000, because that's where my camera is usually set. Actually, I have the, the, I have capture one set at 55, so I'll go to 55, so it matches. And we're gonna make a shot similar to our, um, our HMI shot to start with. So, this is gonna be bright, don't look right at it. Again, I'm gonna kill the lights here. Wow, that's bright, okay. Blinding you. Okay, this has barn doors so I can shape it, we can focus it. We can do all kinds of fun stuff with this. And more importantly, for my purposes, we can dim it. And probably also for Darren. <laughs> She's like, please dim it. Okay, we can dim this down to get it what we want. Now, what I'm gonna do, because I wanna kind of match the exposure of the other light, is I'm just gonna bring this in. Oh, that was pretty good, right off the bat, all right. And I'm just gonna look through the back of my camera. This is the beauty of, somebody asked earlier, why constant lights? Well, I'm looking through the back of my camera and I just adjusted the light and now I should have a good exposure. I don't have to worry about a light meter or anything. I'm gonna turn this one off. So we're just using the one light again. Again, this is gonna give us like a nice punchy, there we go, good, all right, good. Okay, I didn't switch cameras again, but you, you get the idea. All right, hold on, no, I wanna use this one. Nope, that's not right. Okay, all right, well, you're not seeing anything, but you can see the picture. Again, this is now the LED. It's dimmed down, so I can bring it to the, where I wanted to exposure-wise. The color is really beautiful, right? We've got nice, clean color. We've got shape and texture. This is a great light. And what I can do with this, okay, let's see. All right, I'm gonna jump over here. Just wanna set this up for you guys. This is it right here. Boom. That should be right. Nope, that didn't work. There we go, okay. Now you're looking at that little slice is, is, is her. <laughs> there you are, sorry. Uh, yeah, okay. So we've, we've got the image up on the screen. You guys can see it all looks good. I'm gonna be a little bit nicer now. <laughs> you can step out of the light for a second if you want. And we're gonna use softbox. Okay, again, we have the panel light. It's really beautiful, right? But that's all it does. I know I'm a little dark here. This, I have that focusable light that I can do all kinds of stuff with, and I can put a softbox on the front of it. So I can take this guy, take my barn door off, go here, and the heat's kicking on or something, I don't know. You hear that banging? You hear that as somebody coming for us, it's hard to say. I'm gonna switch to the softbox, which is gonna make it nice and soft. Not only, not only is the light going to be a little more gentle, it'll be a heck of a lot easier on your eyes. Um, we've made the light source larger, which is going to make it soft. It's also very diffused now. So now, once again, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to turn off the overheads. And I'm just going to look through the back of my camera. And I'm going to turn the dimmer until it becomes the, the exposure that I want, which is right there. Softbox eating about two-ish stops. And we can see now, you can even see the color shifted slightly because a softbox is going to do that, right? A softbox is actually going to, anytime you put your light through something, I'm actually gonna go a little slower on the shutter speed too. Uh, anytime you put your light through something, it's going to change the color slightly. So there's one reason why, and this demo is not about that, but if you're doing custom white balances, you want to, do them after all your lights are in place with everything there, right? You always want to do that after the fact. Uh, once they discover, yeah, so this is really interesting. So 
I think that flash is really important. And yes, I agree that if you are going to pursue photography as your career, you're probably going to want to use flash. It gives you so many advantages. However, when you say creativity, I'm going to take, I'm going to take exception to that. What I found is 99% of the people that use flash put it in a softbox and shoot the same picture all the time. The, one of the reasons why I step to constant lights is because they're so unique and interesting. If you buy not just panels, but things like this data light or the HMIs, things where you can shape the light and really control it in a way you cannot do it with the flash, you will get much different results. You even see some of these new gimmicky things that are coming out, these, these uh, cookie projectors that people are coming out with flashes. That's all coming from the world of constant lights because they, they can't do it with the flash very good and they don't work as well as these do. So just keep in mind that if you want to be able to really go deeply into your photography and control the light, that's when some of this stuff can be interesting. Is it better than flash? Definitely not. It's different, different. Nothing is ever better. Apple's version of Lightroom. I don't know if I understand that. <laughs> Capture One is, okay, so let's, not that I want to go down that route, but Capture One is great if you shoot tethered. Lightroom is, I find to be really good for archiving. And it's much better now than it used to be. It used to be that uh, Lightroom was really slow, but it's gotten much better, so. But if you do tethered shooting and it's part of what you do, I would definitely look into Capture One. There's no question. It is the number one software for that for a reason. Okay, so now, oh, I should show one more type of light. One more, right? There's one more type, the type that you've all been waiting for. <laughs> you're really waiting for it? <laughs> you've been waiting a long time for this. Okay. So, trending now on TikTok and everywhere else that things trend. RGBDDWWF wrestling tubes. Okay. If you have watched any streamer that has all kinds of colors going on behind them and everything, they're using these guys, right? This is a small one. No, these are cool. This is from Nanlite. Basically, these tubes are LEDs that can be any color. Awesome, right? Great for effects, great for fun, great if you can't take good pictures and just need something to be gimmicky. Ooh, did I just throw a little shade? But we won't use it that way. We don't want to use it that way, right? We want to use it in a fun way. This is a great way to add color without having to worry about gels because we can just jump right through it. This is the small one. They got big, long ones, uh, four foot long. They, I think they even have a six footer now. These are very, very cool to have. I recommend anybody that works with any kind of constant light that you have at least a couple of these small ones in your kit because they're super useful and let's talk about them now. So they run on battery or you can plug them in. I think technically in the how-to guide, they probably don't say that you can run them off AC power, but I usually leave mine plugged in and I never have a problem with battery running out. So I'm gonna say you can effectively AC power them as long as you start with AC. Obviously we can be just regular daylight and I've done videos where we use this as regular daylight, but let's use some fun color with these. I'm gonna switch it to HSI mode, right? Which is hue saturation intensity. And then I'm going to go in here and I can change my color. Right now I have it at this kind of like, what's your favorite color? I like green. 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 Never use green light on somebody's face. <laughs> no, green's cool. All right. We can take our green light and we can put it back here and we can see that we're gonna be able to uh, direct it onto the back of her. I'm gonna use it on her hair and kind of the side of her face because I don't think that putting green light on directly on somebody's face is gonna be, look that good. So we're gonna be able to add green light like that, right? And you see how I asked what her favorite color is? That's something I always do whenever I'm using gels and stuff. I'm like, what's your favorite color? And then they're always like green and I'm just like, do I have a green gel and you're digging through? Here it can be any color, right? And I can change it. If we take one shot and we don't, well, I snapped twice and we don't like it, we can change it, right? We can always change what we do. These are super useful and they're that little extra thing you can add. The day that Flash can do this is gonna be a huge deal <laughs> in my life. Uh, give you Flash any day. Well, you're welcome to have Flash. Go for it. Those who limit themselves to any one thing will find themselves limited. All right. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna bring our dado back in. 
because I'm not going to use that as the primary light source. I've done it before. We had fun with it in some videos, but really I would never use the small tubes as my primary. It would be such a, 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 a specialized thing for me to do. They're really going to be an extra light to add in. Okay. I'm going to use my dado in the softbox as my key here. And I'm going to have her looking kind of this way-ish towards the light so we can get that nice kind of green hue on the back. And we'll see if we can balance this out and get a nice kind of like spark of color in there. Because all these images so far, of course, with a single light have been very flat, right? Now we can start to add a little bit of depth and dimension to our images. Okay, good. Bring your face this way a little bit. Good, like that. Here we go. Good. All right, now we're going to be able to add something in with a little bit of green. Let's go like that. Hey, it worked that time. Okay. Now we've got a little color. This could be something as simple as adding this color. Maybe there's some kind of a scene going on. There's things happening within the scene. We want to have a little color. I have, you have multiple lights, right? Like I said, that's why you want to buy a couple. You can mix them a little bit, have like highlight on the other side of her face. It's also green or a different color. We could add anything we like here. And what I'm going to actually do, let's actually start to bring this. I'm going to have you come forward a tiny bit. I'm going to lights. I want some room to, room to work here. All right, now that we've done this, let's compose like kind of a, like a fun shot, right? We're going to put something together using a, a couple of different lights. And I'm going to use things with the, with the way that they are the strongest, right? Look up here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the panel light, which is best as a key because it's a, kind of a soft, even light, right? We're going to use that as our key. Put it in right over here. Move this guy out of the way for a second. Then I'm going to take this dado and instead of putting it inside the softbox, which works fine, right? But again, we're using things to their strengths. I'm going to come in here, dim this back down a bit, and I'm going to take the softbox off of it. And we're going to switch to a barn door. So barn door is going to allow us to shape the light, to put it exactly where we want it. Try that with a flash, and you will find it doesn't work as well. All right. Okay. I'm going to roughly put these in place, and then we'll see what we're going to get here. So I've got that as my key. I've got this punchier light coming from the back. We're adding some dimension here. There we go. Good. This is just an initial shot. I got to bring the color in, of course. Okay, our exposure is a little on the dark side. And that's okay. I'll make a quick adjustment here on exposure wise. I'm going to bring this in closer. Actually, I'm going to leave it where it is because I like the style of the light. Whenever you're working with constant lights it's a, that have dimmers, it's a good idea not just to start them at 100%, right? So basically, <laughs> that was at 50, so I was able to just turn it up now instead of moving it. Because just like a flash, right, if you move the light closer, it's going to change... It's going to change the quality of the light, too. So we'll leave it where it is, because I like that quality. We've got that nice coming across. You've got that subtle hair light from the dado in the back. This is what you want hair lights to look like. Somebody's probably looking at that thing going, weren't you going to use a hair light? That's what you want, right? If you start blasting hair lights so they're super bright, they become obnoxious unless that's the style you're going for. So what we're going to do here is we're going to, I'm going to turn it up just a smidge, but not much. So I think that's in a good spot, power-wise. And what I'm going to do, because remember, I can dual color these, I'm actually going to turn this to a little bit of a, a warmer vibe. So I'm going to dial it down to 4,000. Okay, so it's about 1,000... Uh, cooler or warmer, however you want to say it, than the other light. So effectively what's going to happen is she's going to get a bit of a warm light coming from that side. Let's see what that does. See, we turned it up a little bit, added a little bit of warmth. We can see that, right? And now if we want to bring the color light in, we can now bring it in. Now I could leave it green. <laughs> I'm not going to. Sorry. You had your green light. Now I'm, going to, I'm actually going to take it and I'm going to go... What would be nice here? I could just make it the same color, right? The same warm, whoa. Oh, hopefully we're still streaming because I just, it looks like the, the thing crashed. Don't worry guys, we just crashed. <laughs> oh, oh, my production continued, thankfully. Okay. Huh. 
<laughs> You'd like the new constant light demo. Yes, well, there will be, in fact, a constant light demo with the new red light. That's a very good shill move right there. Very perfect. <laughs> no, yeah, we're going to actually be up on Tuesday, next Tuesday. That's, thank you for reminding me. We're going to be back. And we're going to do a constant light demo, but we're going to use the new Rotolite AOS 2s. I'm waiting. One more is coming. I have one now, and another one is on the way. So that'll be super fun. What's going on, Seth? I need you. Uh, okay, what's that light called that you have the that I'm using that has the color? This is in the link uh, for uh, to, uh, for this light is in the description, but it's it is called a Nanlite Pavo Tube. 6C, PavoTube 2-6C. That's a heck of a long name. But PavoTube will probably find it for you. Or just go to Nan, the Nanlite section on Adorama's web, website. Or, of course, like I said, it's in the description. Okay, so I'm going to change this uh, hue. And we're going to go, actually, a little bit on the reddish side. Am I, am I like, going the opposite of your green purposefully? Maybe. <laughs> No, because I have orange coming from one side, so I'm going to add a little red over here to make it a little bit kind of like end of day mixy mix. Yeah, it's a little much. So it's a little bright. I'm just going to dial it down because, again, this is the beauty of the LEDs is that you're going to have all this control. If you start to dim, let's say, a tungsten light or even an HMI too much, what you'll find is you're going to start to get a uh, color shift, and you're not going to get that with LEDs. All right, with good LEDs anyways. All right, so now we're getting some, I have it in the shot, I'll move it a little bit. Getting a little red, hmm, that might be more red than I want it to be though. I think what I'm actually gonna do here is bring it back. I want more spread on the red. More spread on the red. All right, here we go. Good, good, good. Let's see what we got. And again, this is the beauty of this is that I can see it. Good, looks like that. And we can add that little bit of color. So again, we're getting this dimensionality. We can actually see it on our cheek here. We're, add, we're able to add whatever color we want. So that's kind of the, the thing with that, right? Uh, let's see. P, da, da. <laughs> Would I refer to the inverse square law? <laughs> Maybe. I mean, the inverse square law is definitely a thing um, you know, that we all are a victim to. Trying to change that law for many years, but we haven't been able to. Um, the thing with the constant lights, though, is that you don't have to think about it as much because you can kind of see what you're doing. This is why constant lights are great for people when they're trying to learn to light, especially if you're uh, working alone, you know, because you can really, like, I can just look. You know, I'm looking at the back. I can see I'm changing this into, like, a more funky. So what's happening here, guys, is... You should get this beautiful jawline. I don't know what camera I'm looking at anymore. This beautiful jawline. And uh, I'm moving the light more to the center because if you've ever been to any of my demos, that's where I like to set the light. Um, to create that, right? So we've moved it now more to the center. I can see it perfectly. It's nice and even. I'm actually going to turn it up a smidge power-wise. Good. I'm going to go a little bit. The only real issue with most LEDs and stuff is that you're going to find yourself wanting for power at a certain point if you're really trying to get uh, deep depth of field and stuff like that. Unless you've got these really big units, you know, that'll draw a lot of power. Like these little tiny LEDs are not putting out a whole lot of power. The data's only at like 10%, but I've got it in the back right now. All right, so we're gonna bring this over. What I'm gonna do here is I'm kind of funky in this up a little bit, right? I'm gonna actually bring this forward because now that we're using like this pinky color, I'm actually going to get it more on her face to try to just get like a little bit of reflective color on her face. And what I'm going to do actually is move this light to this side to create mm -hmm. some shadow. Good, good, good. It's a little hot. <laughs> so uh, we'll mess around with this a little bit when we use the Rotolite, but the Rotolite actually you can use TTL to make its adjustment. Oh, there we go. Okay, this is cool. Now I need to balance this. So I'm going to come over here. I think really what I want to do is I want the whole thing to be darker. So I'm just going to take my... Oh, nope. I just took a picture for nothing. I'm going to take my shutter speed and bring it up to get it where I want it. Good, good, good. 
when you face this way slightly, but not good. Right? We're getting that exposure on there, right? Exactly what we want it. We have nice skin tone. We have this little bit of color coming in. And because I use this reddish kind of pink color and I'm also overexposing slightly on the other side, it feels a little more natural, right? Because that could be a skin, that could be a skin, uh, natural skin tone to some effect. Okay. Let's do one more tweak and then we'll take some questions and we'll be good. We're killing it. I know I didn't use the green. I'll use the green. I'm so, I'm so nice, yet I'm, I'm so mean, actually, but I try to pretend like I'm nice. Okay, here we go. All right, so. Good, good, powerful, good, nice. Nice, all right. So again, I just added that little bit of the brightness to the dado to have a little more depth going on. I wanna change one thing here. I'm gonna go a little darker. I think I actually wanna roll this back a little bit. Yeah, there we go. So that's like a neutral skin tone. So I'm, I want to be a little bit bright. So I'm going to leave that where it is. Power-wise, I'm going to drop the light. Here we go. I'm using the inverse square law, guys. And I'm going to move the light a little closer. The reason why I'm doing that is because I like the way everything else is balanced. And the tighter this light is to her, the quicker the fall off will be. So you see how we just moved it closer? Not only is it brighter, but we've got a much faster fall off into the shadow. All right, let's take a couple like that because I kind of like that. Good, 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 good. Turn towards the red light, good. There we go, let's see what that looks like. And then straight on, good. Nice. Yeah, we're clean, right? You can move around, I can see it, I can see where the light's falling, that's beautiful right there. Real strong, good. <laughs> it's so funny, the stream is like behind by like a minute. So whenever like I see myself in the stream, it's like, what am I doing? Never look at all the computers at once, guys. Okay, let's see. Let's go back. Here. Oh, I'm silhouette. Let me turn the lights on. You're probably going to be crazy bright. Yeah, <laughs> you're very bright back there. Whew. All right, just waiting for you guys to catch up for a second. Any questions wise? Here's the thing. In summary, in summary, there's a lot of different kinds of constant lights. And you've got advantages and you've got disadvantages, right? Your advantage of the constant lights are they're gonna be what you see is what you get, right? They're gonna be, the prices are all over the place. For the best of the constant lights, you're gonna pay a lot, just like you pay a lot for the best of the flashes. What you're generally getting with constant lights though for the better stuff is better color, right? Not brighter, because again, we've talked about tungsten, you can get very inexpensive tungsten with good color, but then you're gonna to be too hot. So each type of light has its own thing. They're all constant lights, but they all do a little bit different and we want to use them for different reasons. If you want something that's specialized, that's very controlled, that has the ability to focus, that can add really cool cookies easily, things that actually can look like daylight very simply, then things like HMIs and some of these better LEDs will work really well for you. If you want to stop action, if you want to make the sky dark in the middle of the day for a reasonable price, flash is going to be a better option. No one thing is the best thing. What you want to do is use different things. And as soon as you put yourself in a category that you only use one thing and you're never willing to explore beyond that, you will find that you'll start to lose traction. What you want to do is keep moving forward, trying different things, trying different kinds of lights. All this stuff works together to create really fun stuff. And we've done videos before and I can do more videos where we mix them together and that's where the real fun happens. So I put a uh, link at the very beginning of this whole thing and I'll put it in the comment section below. The, my new podcast, if you guys are interested in podcasts, and even if you're not. Uh, every Monday it comes out, Monday morning, we're going to talk about the philosophy of being a creator. I put it at the beginning of this uh, thing, and I'll also put it in the comments below. I'll comment with uh, the link to Darren's uh, Instagram. She's a wonderful model here in New York. Um, and a actor as well. So there you go. Uh, thanks, guys, for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Next week, Gavin's going to be here with props. That's going to be exciting. I'm curious what the prop is. We'll find out next week uh, uh, on this channel. So make sure you're subscribing and doing all that good stuff so you know what's up. Any other questions you have that I'm not answering right now where we're live, put it in the comments below and I will get to them. I'm going to check all the comments tomorrow and we'll answer a bunch of comments and I'll put those pins up. So whew, that was a whole lot. Thanks, Seth, for jumping in the chat. We missed you this week. We'll see you in a couple weeks, guys, when I will be back doing more fun stuff here.
So yes, <laughs> you're welcome. Thanks for watching, guys. Oh, I guess you could follow me too if you want. Daniel Norton, photographer. Seth will kill me because I never said that. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a good, not a good picture for myself. And uh, all right, let's see if I can do the end screen without like still looking professional. Nope, that doesn't look right. All right, stand by while I do an end screen, like a boss. <laughs> Hold on, there we go. There it is.